We don't have this opportunity too often when we celebrate the feasts of the apostles, Peter and Paul. It's an opportunity for me to wear red once more, which all of you know I look very good in. So it's a joyful day for us. Today we celebrate two of our great saints in our church. No doubt our Lord Jesus Christ is the rock is the cornerstone of the church, the head of the body. And yet, we celebrate Peter and Paul as two of the major building blocks of that church. Peter and his mission to Israel. And Paul, his ministry to the Gentiles. And in them, we see two poles, two keystones of the Catholic Church. In Peter, we see unity. And in Paul, the mission, diversity. Of course, these are not mutually exclusive. Of course, they were very ordinary men, sinful men. We know that Peter would deny our Lord three times. Paul would persecute Christ when he persecuted Christ's body, the church. And yet God uses them. And no longer would they be a stumbling block for Christ's continuing mission, his purpose to gather all the nations. But through his grace, they would enable the church to explode on the world scene. And so let's look at Peter for a moment, son of Jonah, Simon. In today's gospel passage, our Lord changes his name to Kepha in the Aramaic. Translated into the Greek, it is Cephas, or more literally, Petros, the rock, from which we get the English Peter. He was a great man of stature, a fisherman, a strong man who became a fisher of men. We know that he was a giant of a man because when they did the excavations under St. Peter's Basilica, they found the remains that were marked, here lies Peter. And his bone structure is massive. Big man. Courageous man. This is in contrast to Saul of Tarsus, who the disciples would nickname Paul from the Latin Paulus, which means little. Paul was not big in stature. He was a little man. We know this from the Acts of the Apostles. We hear about his fellow disciples rescuing him when they were ready to put Paul to death. They lowered him over the city wall in a basket. He had to be pretty small to fit in a basket. And so they teased him about his size, and yet they could only tease him about his size because he was such a great and strong-willed man, powerful, zealous, on fire. He would be the great, great missionary, the first of many that would bring the gospel to the world. And yet we know that Paul recognized the unity of the church in Peter, the prince of the apostles. For as immediately after Paul's conversion, after he had been instructed, he goes to Peter to verify his teaching so that he might teach what was orthodox in his missionary work. And when he ran into difficulties in his ministry to the Gentiles and the laws that they would have to require would have to follow, he goes to Peter for that council of Jerusalem, for the guidance of the one who brought unity, the vicar of Christ, Peter. Paul recognizes that. And so we celebrate unity and mission, oneness and diversity, just as that is a hallmark of Peter and Paul, so must it be a hallmark of the Catholic Church and, and must be a hallmark of our lives as Catholic Christians. We need to work for unity. 
that we might build up the body of Christ, that Christ's peace may abide with us, that we might be one as Christ prayed that we would be one. There are three things that I would like to look at under unity, and these could apply as well to the domestic church, to our families. In order to have unity, we must be willing to work together, socialize together, and pray together. We need these three things. If we as a church do not work together, do not socialize with one another, do not pray together, we have no church. And the same is true of our families. If our families do not work together, socialize and pray together, then you no longer have a family living in a home. You have individuals living in a house. And so we must be conscientious about building unity in our families and in our church. Let's take the example of the family meal. It just doesn't happen. It takes work. Someone's got to prepare the meal. Hopefully they get a little help. Someone's got to set the table and serve the meal. Someone else has to help clean up. It shouldn't be the same person. As a family works together, we build one another up. We gather at the table to share our lives, to tell our story, our ups and our downs, our struggles and our joys. It's this way that we get to know each other and become a part of each other's lives. We need to do this as families. And we need to do it as church. That's why we have hospitality most of the year, not today, but most of the year, throughout the school year. That's why we have a parish picnic, why we have a parish mission, why we have so many parish events to bring us together, that we may work together, that we may socialize with one another, that we may pray together. Family prayer is something that needs to be a part of all of our lives. Sometimes it's easier to pray together at church than it is at home. It becomes so intimate, so close. And yet that's exactly what prayer should be. It is all about a personal relationship with God and with one another. And so if your family is not praying together, begin with a simple prayer at mealtime. Bless us, O Lord, in these thy gifts which we are about to receive from thy bounty through Christ our Lord. Amen. A simple prayer followed by maybe some petitions. God bless the cook. Good petition. God bless our family. Help me with my test today. Help us on our vacation. Bring us joy. Help us to forgive one another. Little petitions. Hopefully every time our committee of our parish meets together, anytime we gather together, that we socialize some, that we build one another up, that we share our lives, and we pray together before we do any work. And so, on this solemnity of the Apostle Peter, we celebrate our unity, our Catholicity, that we are an apostolic church, that we are one church, by working for unity within our parish and within our families. But we cannot forget that we are also called to the mission of Christ, which is symbolized by St. Paul, the great evangelist to the Gentiles, the one who took the gospel into the world. We as a parish must do that, no doubt. We need to take care of our needs here. The very existence of this church gives testimony to our faith in Jesus Christ, to the community around us. But our mission must also go beyond these doors. Our education ministry, those who serve at Resurrection Catholic School or Lancaster Catholic High School and our religious ed program, all help the mission of Christ of spreading the gospel. Those who participate in and work for our adult education are all part of the mission of Christ to spread the good news. Our community meal on Friday nights. It's a way of bringing the good news, of continuing the mission of Christ, of feeding those who are hungry. 
So many of our ministries do precisely this, bring the gospel to the community, but we can't do it all. But we need to put our money where our mouth is, and we do. As a tithing the tithe parish, we continue to support ministries, the mission of Christ in the larger community by supporting local organizations, national organizations and international organizations that continue the mission of Christ. This is how we live in the spirit of St. Paul. That we recognize that it's never about ourselves, but ultimately it's about the mission of Christ in the world around us. We do that every year in our Bishop's Annual Lenten Appeal by supporting the mission of the larger church. And we do that individually. When you go out of the house and go out to dinner and you cross yourselves as you pray in public, as you wear a cross or a religious medal, as you express kindness on the highways and byways as you drive your cars, because you have a little bumper sticker that says Jesus loves you on the back. We evangelize in so many ways. Our extraordinary ministers of Holy Communion by taking communion out to those who are homebound and those who are sick continue the mission of Christ. Make visible the gospel of Christ. Every time we defend the weak and the voiceless, we proclaim the mission of Christ. Every time we take the time to explain the teachings of the church, the beautiful morality that has been given to us, we continue the mission of Christ. And so on this great feast day of the church, let us pray. St. Peter and St. Paul pray for us that we too may pour out our lives as we work for unity and the continuing mission of Christ, as we pour out our lives as a libation to you. Pray for us that we may compete well, that we may finish the race, that we may keep the faith, that we too may give God glory in our words and in our actions, in what we do and say, and we ask these things through Christ our Lord.